Hi, I'm Daniel. This is Asheville, and today I'm on a private historic estate with one billion tons of construction material. Glen Sander is a 6,000 acre private estate on the west coast of Scotland, which is only accessible by sea. The estate is basically a gigantic quarry. It's one of the largest quarrying operations in the entire world. It has 715 million tons of material still in the ground to be extracted. The material in the ground here is granite. In order to extract billions of tons, you need hundreds of millions of pounds worth of infrastructure. In total, the quarrying, processing and loading equipment in Glen Sander today would cost in excess of 250 million pounds to purchase and install. This consists of crushers, which break down material into different sizes, screeners, which sort material into different sizes, a ship loader, a wash plant, which cleans material, and a filter press, which processes the silt water product from the wash plant. We'll explain the significance of this later. The machinery and equipment is spread out over the site, along with multiple conveyor belts, one of which is 1.8 kilometers long. This transports material to different processing areas. Maintenance on site is carried out by a team of 40, and over 40% of the maintenance costs are directly related to wear due to the abrasive nature of the granite stone, which basically means it's extremely hard. This makes the material produced at Glen Sander perfect for use as construction aggregate. Examples of this are Type 1 MOT, which is used as a sub-base under patios, and track ballast, which provides a bed and drainage for railway tracks. A little bit of a timeline on Glen Sander. It's thought to be where the first Vikings settled and led their raids on what is now modern-day Scotland back in the 8th century. In 1982, John Foster Yeoman purchased the site and applied for planning permission. In 1983 was their very first blast. Over the next few years, the harbour was developed and in 1986, the first ship left here with 53,000 tonnes destined for America, Houston, Texas. In 2008, Foster Yeoman was purchased by Aggregate Industries. Up until 2008, 100 million tons of material had left Glen Sander. And in 2011, a new record was broken as the biggest ever cargo ship left with 96,665 tons of material destined for Rotterdam. Up until this present day, over 190 million tons of material has been shipped from Glen Sander. So how did one billion tons of rock end up in the ground at Glen Sander? This is a story hundreds of millions of years in the making. Now granite is an igneous rock. Igneous comes from the Latin word for fire. So 400 million years ago, there were volcanoes fed by a material called magma below the Earth's surface in a pluton, which is a body of ingressive igneous rock which is basically lots of very hot rock in liquid form trying to push upwards. When the volcanoes became dormant, the pluton cooled and became what we call today granite. Then, over the next 300 million years, it raised to the level it is today for a process called uplift. This is in the rock cycle where the pressure of tectonic forces causes buried rock to rise up to the surface. Glen Sander has its own castle. And as such, Aggregate Industries are the owners and custodians trusted for its preservation. As part of the preservation process, a stone mason is brought in every few years to make sure the walls are still structurally sound, and AI measures the vibration from the quarry activities regularly to ensure there's no movement. The infrastructure on site is that of a major harbour, because it is 
its own designated UK harbour with its own customs clearance and marine team working 365 days a year. It can accept all size vessels loading anything from 800 tonnes to 96,665 tonnes. Everything you can see at Glen Sander, including the heavy mobile plant, came on this barge. Except two items. One, the primary crusher. Two, the shiploader, which came by heavy lift barge. In total, on site, there are 30 pieces of heavy mobile plant. That consists of dozers, dump trucks, loading shovels, 360 excavators, and telehandlers. And there are 50 light goods vehicles, such as pickups. All is maintained and serviced on site in a dedicated workshop. There is a complete wildlife and ecosystem at Glen Sander. Now the quarry and operations are limited just to the area where they are processing to limit the impact it has on the natural wildlife. We have sheep, red deer, otter, badger, fox, wood mice, bats, various birds, and whales and seals can be seen around the harbour area. The plan for next year is to plant an additional 150 acres of woodland. There's a sustainability plan in place to ensure once the quarry's reserves have been exhausted or the quarry stops operating, the area will be returned to its natural beauty. Now, if you look behind me, these 20 meter benches, which look like giant steps, they are being restored to limit the visual impact and promote biodiversity. The term biodiversity is short for the term biological diversity. It refers to all the different kinds of living organisms within a given area, including plants, animals, fungi, and even single cell algae that is impossible to see without a microscope. The biodiversity plan is put in place to limit the impact the quarry has on its environment. The aim is to protect, regenerate, and enhance, so living organisms and ecosystems may thrive. A major part of this is the repurposing of silt. Silt is a byproduct from washing the granite. Now it is the smallest molecule of granite, smaller than 63 micron. You'd have to look for a microscope to see it. The silt is tipped in this area and then covered with peat. Peat is a top layer of turf and soil which has been removed from another part of the quarry. This has been saved and then reused here, spread on top of the silt to promote natural growth. Glen Sander is basically its own small city. They have 190 people who are based here. This is made up of management, engineers, plant fitters, plant operators, the welfare team, and of course, the most important of all, the chef. And there are facilities here to accommodate the staff to ensure their health and well-being throughout their shift. A canteen, overnight accommodation, there's a gym, a sauna, a TV room, and a games room. Should the worst happen, emergency services are on site. In every area, staff are trained in basic medical and first aid. In the case of an emergency, professional medical care is one hour away by sea or air. All waste on site is managed, segregated and recycled here. And they have their own fresh water system. Water is drawn from a river, put for a filtration plant and pumped to the welfare facilities. Glen Sander is a story hundreds of millions of years in the making, trying to extract, restore, and preserve. A fantastic coming together of skilled men and women, engineering, machinery, logistics, transport, and geology, giving benefits to local, national, 
and international economies.